Live from Orlando, Florida, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering Enterprise Connect 2016. Brought to you by Oracle ZDLRA, Vonage, and Cafe X. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jim Burton. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here inside theCUBE, special coverage of Enterprise Connect, and I want to thank our sponsors real quick, Oracle ZDLRA, Zero Data Loss Appliance, Cafe X and Vonage, thanks for sponsoring. Buy their stuff, they're great, they support theCUBE. Okay, I'm John Furrier, here with Jim Burton. Our next guest is Hardy Myers, President of AVST, Enterprise Grade Unified Communications. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So obviously enterprise grade is one of those things where it's kicked around, but there's a lot of nuances around what enterprise grade means. You see stuff that's free, Google Hangouts, Skype has a free product, they have Skype for Business, which is much more SLA. How hard is it to be enterprise grade? It's actually very hard, and our core competency is making unified communication solutions for medium and large enterprises. So we sell to, through channel, uh, worldwide to medium and large enterprises. And what's the vibe at the show this year? I mean, this seems to be one of those years where the cloud is obviously center of attention. It seems to be breaking out, it seems to be hitting an inflection point. I agree, uh, cloud is hot. We made an announcement about cloud this week, and uh, the bottom line is for large enterprises, moving to the cloud is complex. Uh, typically, it's a hybrid scenario. Um, some pure cloud scenarios, Microsoft had some great announcements today. And so we, we made an announcement about how we're going to enable people to move to the cloud, both to a Microsoft Cloud or whatever the cloud they want uh, in the near future. Can you share a little bit specific on the announcement because that's a pretty big deal. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, so we have you know, for many years supported private cloud, large enterprise, high, you know, high scale deployments, and now we're going to be supporting through our partners and through an AVST uh, delivery mechanism, uh, the ability for enterprises to consume our technology either in a hybrid format or from a cloud directly. Hardy, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is your relationship with Microsoft and the products and services that you support underneath Microsoft. And I think one of, one of the things that I find fascinating is that you know, Microsoft has a lot of partners, but Microsoft actually uses your products in a unique environment. So a lot of people would say, well, gee, why would you use an AVST product when Microsoft has some of their own products? So maybe give us a little bit of background about that relationship and how you've been able to help Microsoft as well as a number of their partners uh, take your product to market sure. to deliver customer solutions. Yeah, so um, very simply stated, you know, large enterprises have very complex environments. Microsoft is a very large enterprise. Um, Skype for Business as a single discrete solution for a large enterprise uh, is probably the end game in many cases, but as about 80% of customers we see are going to migrate to Skype for Business over time. And what the AVST platform does is in addition to supplying some applications where Microsoft doesn't have quite the same level of scalability as AVST does, we also enable a customer to migrate from whatever their legacy environment is to the Skype for Business, uh, whether it's premise or cloud deployment. So, but in addition to that though, you provide some features and functionalities because you, in many cases, are CPE based. Right. So when companies have restrictions of what they can do, you fill that bill. And I think, quite frankly, that's some of what you're able to help Microsoft with that's, themselves. That's true. It's, uh, depending on the customer, uh, if voice applications, uh, highly scalable automated attendance, uh, voice messaging where compliance or confidentiality prohibits them from moving to Exchange or O365, um, uh, informal call center type solutions that are sort of a notch above the baseline configuration but below a big contact center. Those are all areas where we, we deliver enterprise scale or enterprise class levels of, of uh, solutions through our through our and Microsoft's uh, larger partners. Well, maybe you could spend a few minutes just really talking about what your product portfolio looks like. I mean, one of the things that uh, just always surprised me, and I keep forgetting about it, is that you have an informal contact center that is being very, very successful in the marketplace. Right. But just talk about your platform and the breadth of that portfolio, your mobility solutions and all of that, because some people may not really understand all you do, because they, you know, they may stereotype you as a company that they know as a messaging company, sure. and you're so much more than that. Right, right, well, and many people do know us for our world-class messaging solutions, but really what we've built is a highly interoperable unified communications platform by putting our product into an enterprise's infrastructure, it basically future-proofs uh, for them where, you know, how they're going to evolve their infrastructure in the future. And so relative to Microsoft specifically, what we're doing at, at that core is that future-proofing or enabling a customer to migrate over time from a legacy environment, whatever that might be, whether it's a via system, or even operate, frankly, with the, both Microsoft and that uh, other vendors technology at the simultaneously. And so we're able to deliver mission critical voice applications, both messaging and uh, call processing, so highly scalable automated attendance, et cetera, um, in that framework, enable a centralization strategy that supports a big private cloud data center 
deployment, moving into more mobile type uh, capabilities, including uh, secure messaging, uh, call completion, things like that. And then as you mentioned, into informal call, uh, call center, contact center type capabilities. And what we've done is developed a product that's really designed for informal work groups like IT organizations. We see it, we're particularly strong in higher ed. We see several use cases in higher ed organizations where they have teams that want to have contact center like capabilities, but they don't want to outlay that kind of expenditure. And so what we've done is engineer a product that rides on our platform, leverages all the resources that you've already acquired using the AVST technology, for ha perhaps for some of the core voice applications, and enables you to get that kind of technology to those informal work groups. And the feedback's been excellent, as you, as you alluded to. Well, it seems to me that you're in a unique spot because large enterprises don't just wholesale change over, they migrate, and they need to migrate. So you actually have the ability to help them go migrate from whatever their current vendor is over to a Skype for Business solution. That's exactly right, and we have many customers where they started with uh, brand X, and uh, they didn't know whether they were going to go to the cloud or to Skype for Business, or maybe both, and so putting an AVST in is future-proof their infrastructure, and they're very, very happy with that scenario. It's enabled them to move towards a centralized, probably initially a pro large private cloud data Deployment. Maybe they're going to convert that to a managed service with one of our, you know, premier global partners, or maybe they're going to move that up into the cloud and and leverage, you know, some of the great technology Microsoft's delivering from the cloud. Yeah. Great, great to have you here. I want to get your thoughts on the show and this year. What's the big impact to the folks out there, your customers, and a lot of these suppliers here have end user customers that are trying to figure things out. I mean, it's converging. You talked about some very complex enterprise grade stuff, yep. and then you got the cloud, which is just cloud native slap stuff up, stand stuff up quick, get stuff going, yeah. agile, it's all kind of coming together. What is the big impact to the customers this year? So I think, I think it's getting clear on what cloud means to the customer. And, and I call it cloud confusion. Are we talking delivery model? Or are we talking consumption model? And there's a lot of people throwing it around. And so the, from our perspective, our advice, you know, we say, is it, people ask us, are we in the cloud? The answer is yes. Um, and then the question is, what do you mean by cloud? And so, you know, clearly what I think is cool about the show is unlike two years ago, there's probably half of the vendors here are delivering their technology from the cloud or in a hybrid format. And that really portends, you know, the direction for where enterprises are going. And I think it's great. So you, I want to get your take on what's the driver. Is it the economics? Because in the native cloud computing world, it's always been great economics. And you see public cloud clearly there. Yep. What's your take on it? I would say, honestly, I think it's flexibility. I, I don't think it's economics. All right, thanks for sharing your thoughts here in theCUBE, Jim. Thanks for joining us. This is theCUBE on the ground. I'm John Furrier, Jim Burton. Thanks for watching. Thank you.